Okay. Show me. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dutch RC channel for an update in my Speed Quadcopter build part 3. In this series, I'll have a link over here somewhere to uh, the previous videos in this series. And um, this video will be primarily about the flight controller system that I'll be using, but I'll first give you a progress report on what, what I've been doing off screen. Now, um, as you can see, I have put a helicopter um, landing uh, skid thing on the quadcopter. And if you haven't seen my other videos, um, I had a bit of trouble uh, putting my flight controller and PDB stack underneath this servo over here. There's not a lot of room. Um, one and a half centimeters of height to be specific. So I couldn't fit both my flight controller and my PDB underneath that servo. And what I've done is I have put my PDB at the bottom of the quadcopter over here, as you can see. Um, all ESCs and the power cable for my LiPo are already attached. Um, I might put a, a sheet of Lexan over top of it to protect everything, but they are well off of the ground because of this landing gear. So that's all good. Um, all four motors have been fitted on the arms. The ESCs have been strapped down and as you could see those are connected to uh, the PDB already. And uh, yeah, the power co connector is hanging out at the back over here. The flight LiPo will be situated over here. And that is about it for my progress so far. So let's take a look at the flight controller system I'll be using. Okay, we've got ourselves a pretty nondescript little, yes, little box. And um, there's quite a lot in it though. Um, there's an uh, SP Racing F3 Deluxe uh, Plus uh, GPS receiver and OSD in this box. So quite involved little package there. So let's see what that looks like. And the first package, we find ourselves the flight controller itself, which is enclosed in a plastic housing, as you can see. Um, all uh, non, uh, standard connectors have to be soldered, soldered on uh, by yourself. Uh, let's take the shell off, actually. Now, this flight controller, the SP Racing F3, is based on the NACE32. It is a 10 DOF uh, flight controller. That means it has 10 uh, accelerometers, um, uh, sensors that keep track of the direction, angle and speed of your craft. Now it has quite a lot of connectors. Here you see a few connectors for I.O. And here you see four connectors and a USB port. And one more I.O. connector and one more small connector. Um, the small connectors, uh, this one over here is for your uh, V-bed, uh, which uh, you can connect to your uh, PDB, your uh, power distribution board. And you will actually be able to put uh, input the actual uh, flight battery uh, current onto that port. Uh, so in my case 4S. Uh, do make very very sure that you do not switch the polarity of this port around otherwise you will fry your control board. And on the other side there's another small port which is for your buzzer. Uh, there is no buzzer uh, included in this kit by the way but uh, those don't cost a lot. 
and let's see yeah like I said you can uh, solder on your outputs over here for your four ESCs and maybe a servo um, you have you can solder on connectors over here and over here as well um, some are included in the kit in this little baggie over here there's a bunch of wires that come with this flight controller I won't be using all of them but uh, well we'll see and uh, like I said here are the headers for your outputs over here uh, regrettably they aren't angled and I do require them to be angled um, as you can see they go straight up these and uh, that will interfere with the servo in my quadcopter I do have angled connectors so that's not a problem for me and let's see yeah you got a strip of connectors over here that you can solder on to the front two UARTs uh, are those UARTs? yes that's UART 1 and 3 on top of there okay uh, you got a small little lead for this is probably to connect it up to hmm oh this is an, uh, a general COM port connector and another one of those you get two of those very nice and here's another bunch of wires for your receiver um, I'll be using SBUS so I won't be using all of these leads and there's another one of those nice that they include two of those and one connector for your feedback and one connector for your buzzer very nice and a few screws to screw this uh, encasing together I won't be using this encasing I'll be uh, using the flight controller barely as this okay let's get rid of those hold on okie dokie the second part in the box is this little uh, box with a lot of uh, wires attached to it and what is this this is the OSD portion of the of the deluxe version um, what does an OSD do? Um, an OSD superimposes information into your FPV feed. So, uh, for instance, an artificial horizon, the voltage of your flight battery, uh, GPS info, your uh, elevation, speed, uh, flight time, uh, things like that. Um, that's configurable and um, how does this connect to everything well on the left this gray wire uh, it has uh, how many six little connectors and those connect up to your flight controller so that feeds um, information from your flight controller back to the OSD on the other side you've got one black and one red cable which provide power to this uh, OSD so those, those connect up to your uh, power distribution board um, at this moment uh, I have to say that I'm not sure what the voltage input of this should be probably 12 volts so I'll take uh, one of the 12 volt outputs on my PDB for that and uh, these wires over here um, one is your video in so the signal coming from uh, your FPV camera and there's a um, video out uh, that runs to your um, FPV transmitter and there are two black cables which are negatives for both of those channels now uh, one uh, important uh, note for this um, if you have this thing connected to your flight controller with the, these connectors over here you cannot um, connect your flight controller to your computer uh, to the via the USB port uh, so if you want to reconfigure your flight controller be very sure to take these connectors out of your flight controller very important okay 
the last thing in the box. Oh, let me cut this bag open. Okay, we see a, a GPS receiver, yes. And it is a Ublox MHN GPS receiver. So it should be a little more precise and faster in acquiring your uh, GPS signal uh, than uh, the older ones, the, the 6N receivers. It comes with a bunch of mounting hardware. I'm not sure which I will be using. And it actually comes with a little sheet with info on the wires. It would have been nice to include that for the OSD as well, because there's some guesswork in how to connect up the OSD. It would have been very nice to include something like this for the OSD itself. So um, that's basically it. I'll set about mounting the flight controller in my quadcopter now. Hold on for that. Okay, uh, as you can see the flight controller isn't mounted in my quadcopter yet, but I thought it would be wise to add a little note. Um, I've just soldered on the connectors I'm going to be using, um, ESC outputs and other outputs at the front, with an angled connector as you can hopefully see. And this connector over here is one of the UARTs, uh, can I show you that, yeah those pins over here. Um, it is very 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 advisable slash mandatory to check if you do not have created shorts and if you have clean connections. So I checked everything with a multimeter. Now if you do not have a multimeter my, maybe you can wire up a LED with a, a, sh uh, a 5 volt battery so you can Check if you have shorts or if, uh, and good connections. Uh, very advisable. Uh, otherwise, you'd be checking it with uh, the magic smoke method. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Next thing I'll do is uh, mount this flight controller in my quadcopter. Hold on. Okay. Yes. Finally. We have ourselves a flight controller in our quadcopter, yes sir. And um, well, this is a bit of a rant here about the frame itself. Um, as you can see, as the servo over here moves forward, so if I angle my motors forward, there is very, very, very little room between the connector connectors over here, the, the, those are the signal connectors uh, by the way, the, the, the pins on the top and the servo mounting uh, arm thing. Uh, there's uh, about a one millimeter of clearance. Uh, yeah, so uh, there are two ways I can go about solving that. I can put a sheet of Lexan in between it or I can just cut off a few of these signal pins because I won't be needing all of them. I'll probably only need four of them. So, well, we'll see. Um, the other connector over here at the back, I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, the, the, the four pin connector I also soldered on does clear any, everything. That is not a problem, but uh, the signal outputs at the front of over here, yeah, there is clearance. But uh, well, um, what did the designer of this frame think? Um, people weren't going to put a flight controller in this frame or something, let alone a PDB. There is no room in this frame with this setup like this. Um, me personally, I would have gone with a two servo setup with a servo at the front and a servo at the back. You wouldn't have this problem that way. Yep. Okay, well, um, I'll make it work. No problem with that. And let's see. Yeah, I haven't. 
um, hooked up power to the flight controller yet, so I can't show you that it's alive <laughs> right now. Obviously I'll have to um, connect up the ESC signal wires to uh, the flight controller. Um, as you can see this wire is uh, far too long, this is uh, ESC1. Um, so I'll probably shorten up all the ESC wires. Um, I could bundle them up, but I don't want to. So I'll shorten those up and then connect everything. Yeah, uh, the GPS and OSD aren't connected and mounted yet either. I'll, um, yeah, I'm, like I said before, I'm not completely sure at this moment how and where I'm going to mount everything. I want to mount them in a spot so that the carbon fiber of the flame frame doesn't block the signal. That's important. Uh, the same goes for my 2.4 uh, uh, remote control. Well, um, the next video um, I'll go into the programming of my radio for this project. Um, I'm not going to be using the flight controller for the, the motor pitch movement. I know NACE 32s and this uh, SP Racing flight controller have provisions for tilt rotors. I will probably not be using those. Um, if it doesn't work out, uh, I can always do that afterwards. But uh, uh, for now I'll be connecting the, uh, the servo that uh, takes care of this tilting directly to my uh, receiver. Okay, that's it for now. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions about this build, please let me know. Uh, at this moment I can still alter things, so uh, I'd uh, really appreciate any input, ideas, suggestions, anything. Let me know and uh, I hope to see you back in another video. Bye! -bye.